Uh, I'm, a, <coughs> I'm a violinist, as you can see, and as uh, he, he said. I'm a, I would rather call myself a, a, a searcher, because, you know, in, in my field, you always look for something. You look for the perfect sound, or you look for a, a deeper version of a piece that you know for uh, the past 20 years. And I've been searching for the past yes, 30 years. This is how much I have been playing the violin so far. And uh, three years ago, I realized time has come uh, for me to take up uh, bigger things. And uh, for me, as a violinist, bigger thing is to cover an entire work from A to Z. And that's how I started the integrals for a violin solo, the big, uh, big, really big, heavy stones of uh, violin playing. So I started with uh, Paganini, Caprices, the craziest of them uh, all. Now, uh, you know, Paganini wrote these pieces uh, mostly for himself and never performed them in public. So um, I, um, I, I worked uh, very hard about one year and uh, got them all together in one, uh, one single uh, evening. Uh, then uh, next year I, I, I dared to play the Isai sonatas for violin solo, also something even more difficult than, uh, than Paganini itself. And this year, this year was my spiritual year. The last of the integrals for violin solo was uh, Johann Sebastian Bach, all the sonatas and partitas, something considered to be unplayable one in, in one and uh, the same evening because it takes time, you know. Uh, playing them without intermission took me uh, two hours and a half. I will be much shorter tonight, don't worry. But uh, it, it, it was quite a particular experience, I would say, to do each of these, each of these uh, integrals. Uh, I think always, you know, the music has uh, this uh, power to take you out from the daily routine, to, to take you up from, out from the uh, time flow, regular time flow. You know, an artist on stage uh, is uh, at its height of its powers uh, in terms that he can uh, control not only the emotions of those who are listening to him, but you can even get to the point of controlling time. You can uh, make the time flow faster, you, you push the tempo, you make everybody breathe together with you uh, faster and faster, or you can even have this amazing feeling that you stop the time and you hold all the souls of the listeners here at the, at the tip of the bow. It's it's amazing feeling and a huge, uh, huge uh, responsibility. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a never ending uh, play. Uh, because we, we, we strive, we strive for, for the perfection, for the perfect sound, as I told you before, uh, for the perfect shape of, uh, of our music. But alas, we, we can uh, never reach it because it is, I think, it is uh, beyond human powers to reach that kind of uh, perfection. But we can get, some of us can get really very, very close, close to that. Um, I, I think I, I, um, I would. Uh, I should better uh, let the, the music speak by itself. And uh, I would like to, to, to begin with a uh, uh, piece by uh, Johann Sebastian Bach. It's a prelude. A prelude uh, in music like in life. Prelude is uh, some, something which is supposed to bring you into the right mood for what uh, is it, uh, supposed to, to follow. It's a piece that I very often play for uh, myself uh, because it is very happy and uh, optimistical and at the same time it's very serious. So a uh, prelude in a mid e, e major from a uh, third party, Tabai Bach.
thank you. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> yeah. um, I've been. Uh, <clears throat> this this is not working anymore. Well, we can adjust it yes. Or I can just speak without it. <clears throat> um, it is when, when I start playing Bach. It is so hard to stop me <laughs> from from playing it because um, I, I feel this music, you know, is like um, uh, giving birth from itself. You know, it's like a huge domino game, and once once you have uh, touched the first uh, brick, all the others they just follow after each each one after another one. And that's, that's how I was uh, thinking when uh, playing this uh, huge two and a half hours integral. Because, you know, you find yourself all by yourself, alone over there, you and, and God. Because Johann Sebastian Bach is being said that he, he was just writing music, not necessarily for humans, but for God. Uh, is a sort of a direct connection to him. And uh, you, you may ask yourself, what I'm doing, where I am, uh, what is this uh, happening, uh, happening for? And the uh, biggest, biggest challenge is not to memorize a full book of uh, sonatas and partitas. Uh, it is not uh, to learn how to play them. All of this is doable. But the actual challenge is when you go beyond, beyond these things and you are yourself, with you, you, you with yourself, naked over there, and you ask yourself what, what what are you what are you doing um, I, I, uh, I really had a great uh, time playing all these uh, partitas it was a huge concert tour in 12, uh, 12 cities and uh, it totalized over 30 hours of Bach violin playing it was uh, an experience I shall always uh, remember and um, after each uh, such concert tour I, I always took the, the, the time to have uh, these pieces recorded. You know, m many people think that uh, a CD is not a big thing. It is. It is a, an enormous uh, endeavor because uh, you are even much more exposed there on the recording than in the concert hall. In the concert hall, uh, feeling can be subjective. On the recording, there is not much uh, place where you can hide, particularly when you are playing violin solo. And after, after I've been uh, recording uh, several CDs with uh, some uh, Romanian uh, sound engineers and I was not really 100% happy, I, I said to myself, it is time to get serious about recordings as well. And I started searching for somebody, not necessarily a great technician. Technicians, technique can be learned. Uh, music is about something which is not so easily measurable or, uh, or weighing. So I, I, I was actually looking for somebody to understand my music and to understand what, I, what am I looking for. And I was lucky enough to find a guy, uh, a German guy, whose name was not only uh, the one of a great musician, uh, Jakob Handel, but um, who I think he was a bit as crazy as I am. And uh, we, uh, we decided together to break all the rules of, uh, some of, of recording making and I told him, my, my goal when I'm recording something is not to get uh, perfectly polished uh, like, uh, like a pharmacy or, or, or like a museum recording. No, uh, I want to capture all the life and all of this experience of the actual concert. And uh, I never did actually a recording session, but just concerts, concerts which, which have been uh, recorded and uh, which uh, came into, into discs. And uh, I'm, uh, I, I'm uh, very grateful and very happy that I have found uh, someone like, um, like, uh, like him. Um, many, uh, maybe you don't know that, I think uh, when it comes to a recording, the, uh, the, the responsibility for the final result is 50-50, the, the interpreter and the sound engineer. Well, uh, next, uh, next piece I'm going to play for you is uh, uh, directly inspired from this uh, prelude. It's also a sort of a prelude. It is called uh, Obsession. Um, it, uh, uh, it was not inspired from the famous perfume, but from uh, excerpts from this uh, Bach major prelude uh, combined 
with a famous Gregorian chant called uh, Dies Ire, the anger of uh, God. It's, uh, this piece of uh, Isaiah was apparently written when uh, he got very angry uh, about other violinists playing the prelude in a very inappropriate way, virtuosical, making fun of it. And he really felt the real depth of it. And his response to this, uh, Isaiah's response to these interpretations has been this uh, obsession prelude. The piece I was uh, thinking of uh, for uh, for tonight will be a Romanian a Romanian piece. I recall a moment from my childhood when I was uh, spending the summer vacations in my grandparents' uh, home you know, on the countryside, and I, uh, besides practicing, I enjoyed uh, uh, I enjoyed very much uh, going on long uh, bicycle rides. On such a bicycle ride. I know when you're when, when you riding the bicycle, you can not only see better the things around you, but you can also hear them. So I was just riding the bicycle, the bike, and uh, I hear from the distance like a tiny little melody coming uh, from like from, from a hidden place. Well, as I approached more and more, I, uh, I uh, encounter a very old uh, gypsy guy. Uh, he was very tired, uh, very maybe a bit drunk. Um, he was uh, having uh, his accordion hanging at his neck 
and he was slowly going towards his home. It was midday and obviously he had been attending a, a, a wedding or some kind of party the night before. And uh, now, slowly and uh, tired, he was going back uh, home. And the music, he just played it for himself. That was the thing that, uh, that uh, touched me, because uh, music was his kind of companion and his kind of uh, building his own uh, sphere around him, you know. Um, I think such a kind of, uh, of a musician uh, has been a portrait in this, uh, in this uh, piece by uh, George Enescu. Uh, apparently, he also learned to play the violin from a gypsy guy, and uh, this uh, gypsy teacher used to be a, quite a quite a character. Um, he uh, Enescu recalled him as being very very jumpy in a way, so jumping very easily from a joyful uh, a joyful state of being to a sad or melancholic, then again full of energy, and. Uh, again, uh, be, being a very, very thoughtful. So the, the, this piece for a violin solo is uh, actually meant to be uh, like a portrait of uh, this guy, uh, uh, sweet uh, remembrance uh, Enesco had for his uh, first uh, violin teacher.
want to do an encore? You got one more in you? Okay. <laughs> I don't have a lot more music inside my head and inside my heart, you know. I've, I've been uh, basically playing uh, solo violin integrals, huge integrals for the past three years. So if I start playing, we can go on until tomorrow morning. <laughs> 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 uh, but um, let's, uh, well, um, I, I'd like to play you. I, I've been talking to you about uh, Paganini Caprices and uh, I'd like to play for you uh, one of them. Uh, I, uh, maybe one of the most, uh, we're in Los Angeles, we just passed uh, the former Fox uh, Studios, you know? And um, I think if, if uh, I were to be a filmmaker, short filmmaker, I would choose this uh, Caprice to be my uh, soundtrack. Um, and apparently it is not a big deal about it, because uh, it's uh, quite uh, simple, a lot of 16th notes, a lot of arpeggios and so on. But but Paganini was uh, writing here and there some accents, and they don't fall where you would expect them to be. You notice, you know, when, you, when you're listening to a tune that you like or uh, that you recognize, you are able to catch the beat of the, of the music. Well, with this caprice, it will be impossible, I guarantee you, uh, because these accents just fall in and out where you, wouldn't, you would expect them least. Um, and that's how it started. I thought, my God, what is with these accents? And then I had a vision. I said, this should be like a person, uh, a poor man uh, whose soul is uh, possessed by the devil. And you know, his body is shaking in all the uh, unexpected ways, you know, uh, because of this possession. And then as, you, as we go uh, inside the caprice, towards the middle, uh, you can feel uh, his conscious losing, he's all, almost disappearing, but not for long because the devils, they come back, they grab him again, they torture him very strongly, and in the end you, you can hear like some huge screams of spirits coming out of him, and uh, this is why I dared to call this caprice the exorcism. <laughs> Alexander Tomescu, we have his recordings for sale. We are going to stop. He gets to rest. You can hear him Saturday night at Disney Hall. And um, I wanted to.